All right, thank you for joining me for lesson two of understanding cybersecurity. So a very important part of understanding cybersecurity is the realization that you need a cybersecurity plan. Now, a cybersecurity plan may sound complicated, uh, but it is a strategy for being effective in whatever policies or plans you're putting forward. Like with any plan, it's only as good as having it written and assuring that everybody understands the plan who has a responsibility within that plan. That includes all kinds of stakeholders. So again, I'm Mike Eccles. I'm a former cybersecurity director at the Department of Homeland Security. And my goal is to ensure that individuals and companies and organizations understand uh, how to do cybersecurity. And as I normally tell you, cybersecurity is risk management. So that is the basis of everything I do. So let's talk about making this cybersecurity plan. So e even though it sounds complicated, um, it doesn't require any special equipment but it requires a certain level of coordination and management and forethought. And the first thing that we want to do when we're creating a cybersecurity plan is to list our stakeholders. Um, we want to identify the people, whether they're your chief information officer, your chief information security officer, IT managers, exterior uh, information technology people, uh, executives, whoever it may be, we want to list the key stakeholders. Now, this doesn't mean that the other people within the organization are not stakeholders, but these are the key stakeholders. This way, um, they can be reached quickly in the event of a breach or if some other uh, cyber exploit takes place. Um, they have a special level of responsibility. So the next thing we want to do is we want to catalog our IT assets. Uh, you, can, you can't implement a protection strategy for something that you don't know exists. So we need to look wide and hard. And sometimes this requires working with the procurement people to understand what we've purchased. Right. So we want to understand our cybersecurity or IT assets. Um, we want to start listing them. Um, these are the network devices, storage repositories, servers, devices, computers, modems, email servers, um, items that are stored in the cloud. Um, customer relation management programs. Uh, one thing that I want to know is that data that may be on a, of a sensitive nature, um, such as databases with uh, credit card numbers or uh, personally identifiable information or other protected customer information, that needs to be noted also. All right. So the next thing we want to do is we want to identify our protection method. Um, now, this is where we get into the nuts and the bolts of the cybersecurity plan. Uh, we want to understand where we have firewalls and encryption and backup systems and any other methodology that we have put in place as a protection method. Okay. Then, we want to list the threat detection measures that we have in place. Um, these are uh, detection methods that are a part of equipment or they come with equipment that we have or software and those that we've added. Uh, protecting and securing assets is like one of the greatest defenses that you can have. Uh, sometimes the protection is not enterprise wide the protection is device uh, related. So that said, you'll need some to do some work uh, in the form of 
uh, comprehensive threat detection systems. Um, and you'll need to uh, consider incorporating external applications um, that can detect, for instance, phishing attacks. Phishing attacks is when people send uh, these emails that appear to be from someone they're not or they're claiming something that is not true in order to get you to click a link or in order to get you to reveal uh, some important information. So again, in order to understand what we need, we need to know what threat detection mitigation methods that are already in place, all right? Then we wanna establish user guidelines and best practices. Now, I always tell you that if we implemented all the best practices that already exist, we would kill 80% of all breaches across the country, across the nation, across the world. But of course, that's an impossibility that we are gonna implement all the best practices that exist. So we have to pick and choose and do what works for our business organization. So, as we're establishing these user guidelines and best practices, um, understand that although some of the threats come from outside our businesses, a lot of the threats come from inside our business. And then um, it can be malicious, and sometimes the issues are not malicious. Sometimes the issues just are from poor configuration management or from a technical error, or from an installation error, um, but those consequences are the same. But we also have an issue where you can have an insider threat from an employee who is malicious. Uh, and one of the things that we can put in place uh, as far as the guidelines and the best practices is that all employees have to use strong passwords. As a matter of fact, NIST, National Institute of Standards and Technology, now suggests that we should be using pass phrases. These are phrases like, I like chocolate soup. Whatever it is that you can remember, you should make a phrase because it's gonna be harder for the hackers to guess it. Um, we should establish user permissions and access guidelines for data storage and least uh, privileged access. Uh, everyone doesn't need access to everything, right? Just because you're the CEO does not mean you should be a super user admin on the system. So we need to establish who has access to what and why, right? Um, and we need to start training. We got to incentivize through a best practice methodology and through helping employees understand why it is important that they follow these guidelines that um, is key to making this practice and this security plan work. All right. So as we keep moving, we have to create a procedure to handle pot potential threats. They're gonna happen. We're gonna constantly have threats, right? Threats are those things that people can do to us, right? And doing this is a realization that um, prevention is just one side and that uh, these threats can escalate an issue. At this point, no business can absolutely eliminate the risk of a hack or a data breach, no matter how ironclad they are. I'm gonna say that again. No organization can completely eliminate the threat of a security hack or data breach, okay? So when people tell you they can, that is not true because there will always be a new threat vector, there will always be a new vulnerability, and that's why this security plan is something that we constantly will update, okay? Um, so, in some cases, you may need a service provide, IT service provider, you may need assistance in setting some up some of these parts of this cybersecurity strategy or plan, but the key is that you've laid it out 
and you now know the parts of the plan that you need assistance with, okay? So at a minimum, you'll want to include instructions for isolating a breach or if there is an issue within one of your systems that we've already identified and put in the plan, who is responsible for that system and how do we shut that system down? And what are the consequences? When you're talking to an executive, you need to be able to tell them what the consequences of a particular situation might be. All right. So next we want to build in routine testing and auditing. So we've got these systems in place. We know what we have, but we want to understand, um, are they working as they are supposed to work? Right? So that routine testing or auditing, becomes really important. And there are a lot of places to find out how to go about doing these things. And if you continue to watch my videos, I'm gonna teach you all of these things. I wanna teach you how to go through each of these processes and how to do some of these audits, right? So we want to be able to test and measure for new vulnerabilities. There are always gonna be vulnerabilities, whether they're software vulnerabilities, whether they're vulnerabilities because you've taken an old system and linked it with a new system, or it's just that someone discovered a new vulnerability. There are new discoveries going on all day. But when a new vulnerability is discovered, typically hackers find out also. So we want to patch or fix those vulnerabilities as quickly as we can, okay? Then, as we've done all of these other things, now we want to start hosting meetings regularly with our team, stakeholders, so that they begin to understand those best practices that we talked about, those ways of minimizing consequences but more importantly, protecting the system by doing things like making pass phrases. So many data breaches and ransomware attacks can be traced back to an error or a mistake or an employee simply clicking on an email they thought was from someone they knew or clicking a hyperlink that takes them to a site that downloads malware. Uh, there was nothing malicious about it. They were just attempting to do what they thought was their job. So with this in mind, the team members have to be trained. Um, the sessions can be offered as initial sessions, um, sort of these deep study sessions, and but they have to be followed up with uh, training that is like a refresher, right? They figured out that you have to continuously harp on the need for uh, protection of your systems. Um, your IT service providers may be able to help you build your curriculum for these sessions, but you can also find training on the internet, on YouTube, and other various places. You can always come back to my training. Uh, and then the last thing that I want to tell you about that should be a part of this cybersecurity plan you should regularly update the plan so that you can respond to new threats. There are always going to be threats trying to exercise your vulnerabilities. So remember, your vulnerabilities are holes in your system or holes in your software, right? Or something about your system where it does not work as you intended to. Well, there's always going to be a threat, whether it is malicious, uh, not malicious, physically related, like the weather, a hurricane, tornado, um, that could exercise that vulnerability. We are trying to minimize the opportunity for that occurring. So the hackers, they work around the clock to figure out what those vulnerabilities are and how they can exercise them. So you have to continuously work to strengthen your plan and to strengthen your team. 
That means that your plan must be a living document that is regularly evaluated um, and it takes into account the fact that these threats are evolving and emerging on a regular basis. Um, your IT person is a great person to start with to create this plan. But there's a difference between an IT and a cybersecurity professional. So an IT plan or an IT professional, when something is wrong, typically their job is to get it up and working. So they're going to get you access to that system that's down, that's causing you to lose money because you don't have access to your email. Whereas a cybersecurity professional in most cases is going to look at the logs to understand why you can't get into your emails, what occurred, how to reverse it. Is it safe to roll a system back to the point that it was working and make it work again? So really important point. All in all, you can't have a cybersecurity program without a cybersecurity plan. The plan allows everyone in your organization to work as a team. Remember, cybersecurity is a team sport. This is Mike Eccles. Join me for the next lesson and we'll keep talking about how to build that strong cybersecurity program. And I will keep the language as simple as possible because everybody's not a cyber professional, but everybody is responsible for cybersecurity. This is Mike Eccles and I'll talk to you soon.